destroy water that came down. Exactly. Oh, look at that river down there. Dude, that's the first time I've seen it as an L.A. river. I know, right? Actually, it is the L.A. river today, right? Yeah, right. Just the L.A. concrete ditch. Not the parking lot, yeah. No, but no, that's crazy. Look at that. Hi, my name is Aaron. And I'm at a place called Anthelion Helicopters in Long Beach, California. Come join me as I learn how to fly a helicopter and earn my private pilot license. Maybe a little slower then. Yeah, just, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, just with your toes all the time round. There you go. Oh, that almost looks like a, the real deal. The reason I wanted to become a helicopter pilot, besides the cool factor, is there's just so many different jobs out there that you can do. There's nothing like it. I'm here because there's so much to offer, and the one thing I've learned so far is every time that blade turns, it's game time. Alright. Alrighty. Alright. Listen. I want you to go that way, but you're going that way. Alright, left with Julia. Alright, I think I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome viewers back to another video with Anthelion Helicopters. This time we're going to look at more of the basic uh, flight maneuvers. Uh, we just managed to get out between the weather. We had an absolute deluge of water right now. Uh, but we've, uh, we've managed to get out between it, so uh, should be some pretty interesting footage out here. Here with Aaron Cole in the right seat. He's going to be our star student of people today, going through uh, some of the uh, those flight maneuvers we're talking about. Uh, we'll probably go over the harbour of Long Beach to do it, and we'll just see what we can do. called uh, position reporting so you know the radio here is like all common where it's all about uh, being aware of the other traffic around and reporting at known points uh, so that everyone knows where we are okay uh, we'll always tell it the same format so we'll always say you know what the frequency is to start with so this case it's gonna be harbor traffic uh, it's going to be say who you are where you are and what you're doing so it'll go something like this Harbor traffic helicopter 4430 off as out of Long Beach southbound on the uh, 710 approaching New Gerald Desmond Bridge. Southwest bound through the harbor for maneuvers at 700 harbor traffic. All right, and then we just repeat whatever it is at the end, so in this case harbor traffic, just so anyone on frequency knows that we're on the right frequency. And that's a lot to do with the fact that these common frequencies sometimes get used by a lot of different ones, like uh, Corona 122.7 gets used by Catalina and Corona and the Bolivia French Valley as well. Okay. So when you've got three different airports or uncontrolled airports using the same frequency, you've got to know what's going on, right? which one it's at, otherwise you'll get confused and someone's in a traffic pattern at one when they're actually at the other. All right, so let's get you on the controls and you know how to do it, so uh, get yourself positioned on the controls. All right. So let's chat a little bit about, we're at what, 800 feet right now, 90 knots, right? Okay. You're at 20 inches of manifold pressure, right? Are you, are you familiar with uh, control performance method of flying? Yeah. So what, in your words, basically is it? What, what is it saying? Uh, pretty much just staying at a, a level up attitude with a certain amount of power, whereas yeah. you have like climb power and maybe like uh, descending power. Yeah, so let's just offset a little bit here so we don't go over this chimney right now and not get hit by that convex turbulence. Yeah, so essentially what it's saying is, uh, if you've got a given manifold pressure, say in the 44, 20 inches, you sh at straight and level flight, you should expect to see around about 90 knots, right? Yeah. If you're not seeing 90 knots, and know you're at 20 inches, you're actually going to be doing something different. Right? You're either going to be climbing or descending, right? Yeah. So it's a good, a really good way of you as a pilot knowing, okay, where's a good starting point right now? So right now, yep, 20 inches, we are at about between 85 and 90 knots. We are level, we're not climbing or descending really, according to our VSO, we're a slight climb, but nothing major. Right, we're at 900 feet, so it's a good starting point. If we're down at 70 knots, we're going to be climbing, right? For if sure. we're going 120 knots at, at 20 inches, we're descending pretty quickly. Okay. Right? So right now, just you're doing right, just keep us at 20 inches, keep us at straight and level flight. You've got your vertical speed indicator right there. It's just keeping it at zero. You should see, you know, you're, you're not really climbing or descending on your altimeter there. We're maintaining a pretty steady right. uh, airspeed. Looking good, right? Then talk to me through about visual scanning as well. As a VFR pilot, what do you do to, uh, when you're learning? What do you got taught? What do you do when you're looking around for other traffic? Uh, I'm just, I'm looking at uh, airplanes being maybe a little bit higher than me, and then maybe helicopters being the same height as me, 
Yeah, so let's talk a bit more about actually how you do it. How are you looking? Are you looking directly at things, or are you doing a different way of looking at things so you can detect movement? Oh, I'm just, I think I'm just scanning from left to right. Okay. And yeah. then a little bit of up and down. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely right. So remember, it's the corner of our eyes that see movement, right? So when we're learning with uh, out here, because we are VFR pilots, right? We're yeah. not IFR, so we are predominantly you see and avoid, look where we're going. So when we're looking right now, we use that off center viewing every like five to ten degrees all the way across in a visual scan to take on about five seconds, looking for movement out of the corner of our eyes, right? Because we can't see movement when we're looking directly at something. Right. So we do left to right viewing all the way along come down, quickly look at our instruments, make sure that, you know, we have a scan of our instruments, go to our primary instruments first, make sure everything looks the way we want it to look, you know, airspeed's looking good, and altimeter's looking good, power's looking good, then we look at other things, like where the heck we are, you know, any gauges are out of place, then we come straight back outside again, right? right. Most of your time wants to be outside because you want to see where we're going, remember? And we have aviate, navigate, navigate, communicate, right? Yeah. Aviate, aviate, aviate first. Okay. So we always do that. So always make sure we look where we're going. So right now we're at 20 inches and we're about a little bit faster, 100 knots. And guess what? We're going down a little bit, but that's pretty good. We've got a tailwind. All right. So try and keep me at 800 feet and let's put me in a left hand turn and let's take us around uh, so we're facing more, you know, sort of eastbound there, right? So. Clear, right? Just talk me all through what you're doing to do that right now. All right, I'm just checking my right to see if I'm clear. Yeah. And then I'm going to check my left to see if I'm clear there. Yeah. And then I'm just going to, I'm a little higher than 800, so I'm going to... A little bit forward on that side. A little quick. forward. Yeah. So I'm at state, maintain it at 90. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, you know, and if we had an attitude indicator, which we do on this aircraft, we're trying, you know, not to go beyond about 15 degrees on that, right? We don't want to bank it over too hard. Uh, especially to start with, because we'll make it a lot harder to, to gain or lose altitude. There's a little bit of rain over there, right? So we're, we'll go opposite the rain right now. For sure. Right, so yeah, and so if we're doing a climb and descent, right? So control performance method, we want to maintain the same air, airspeed, but we want to go up 500 feet a minute, right? Yeah. So essentially right now, we're at 900 feet. Let me just make another quick call here. Oh, the traffic helicopter, 443 Alpha, Pier 400, southeast bound, 900, harbor traffic. If we want to climb, so we're going to maintain the same attitude, right? Remember, compass on the horizon, we've talked about that before. Yep. All right, and then we're going to come up to about 22 inches of manifold pressure, keep the same attitude, and we should see about a 500 minute climb, 22, 23 inches, right? Okay. At about 85 knots, a little bit forward on the cyclic there. Right? Yeah, we've got about, well, 600 minute climb, but that's pretty close, right? Yeah. That's tend to be how we do it, right? And then we can say we're coming up to 1,100 feet. We'll probably keep it coming up right now, and then we'll lead it by about 50 feet. We're about now, so now come back down to 20 inches on your manifold pressure. Make the adjust necessary adjustment on the pedals. And we're back down, you know, 80 to 90 knots. We're level. We've got rid of most of our VSI, and we're back level again, right? So, again, control performance. Two or three inches up, two or three inches down. Okay. Now let's do the opposite. Go down to about 17, 18 inches on your manifold pressure. Do you have on to hit the uh, car beat? Which is when I lower it? We're fuel injected, mate. We're good. Okay. Right, so just come down to about 17, 18 inches. Right. Okay, now, yeah, keep us level. So you have to come a little bit up on the cyclic, which you did, which is good. Keep us at 90 inches. We'll start seeing a descent right now. Right, there we go. Coming up to 500 feet a minute. So it corresponds, right? So we're checking that. Yeah, we're coming down. Coming back down to 900 feet. When you start getting close to 900 feet, you just lead it a little bit. So come back on the collective, just about to 20 inches again right now. And then we're back up, we're level again, right? Okay. All right, good work. Uh, we're at 90 knots, right? Yes. So we're going to try and increase to 110 knots, but we're not going to try and gain any altitude, right? Okay. Let's bring us over there just a little bit here, like 20 degrees to the left, so we don't go into Long Beach's airspace. All right, so... We're going to have to pull collective, but we're also going to have to push forward on the cyclic, right? You're going to have to moderate that Correct. while keeping us in trim. So try and take us up to 110 knots now, but keep 1,000 feet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're up to, you know, you're up to about 23 inches there. Good. If you need to pull more, pull more. We're actually going up a little bit, so push forward on the cyclic. That's it, bit more on the cyclic. Forward, forward, forward. There you go. All right, we're coming up to 110 knots now, right? We're not gaining altitude, right? Okay. All right, now do the opposite. We're going to go down to about 70 knots. So start leading on the collective, coming aft on the cyclic. Be careful not to come out too, too hard so you don't climb. All right, let it slow down. Try and maintain a 
the same altitude there and balance it out, keep the pedal movements to keep us in trim, there you go, keep coming down that collective, keep it coming down, we're at 90 knots again, just keep coming down, keep coming down, keep coming down, just keep... Yeah, as you're trying to get back to 1,000. Yeah, that's alright, you, you know, as you come back, you're, you're, you're alright, you're at 1,000 feet. That's it, keep coming down, that, we're coming past 85 knots, we can try and get to 70 knots, so if you need to come down to 15 inches, come down to 15 inches. Alright, keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. We're coming down to 80 knots, there you go, yep. Just keep it coming. Hard to slow down this thing, right? Yeah. Good, there you go. Alright, good stuff. We're down to 70 knots. Alright, good stuff. quickly talk about now when we've got the weather is low G, right? We've got a lot of, a lot of uh, convective movement right now with this weather, so, you know, you as a new student, talk me through what you were doing in a low G condition. Well, how would you recognize a low G condition, I should say, in the, in the R44? Uh, you'd feel pretty light in your seat. Yeah, you would, yeah. Um, and I guess the way to correct would just stay in trim, but uh, lower the collective, uh, gently lower the collective, just to put load onto the blades. Yeah, half cyclic, that's what I remember. Yeah, yeah, you've got to re yeah, reload that rotor system, right? Yeah, so low G is, a, is a, obviously a condition any aircraft can get into, any helicopter can get into, but it's uh, underslung, semi-rigid systems are far more susceptible because you can get mass bumping uh, yeah. in the end, which is it's, uh, something we definitely don't want to do. The main thing is we've got to load that rotor. We've got to load it straight away. As soon as you feel uh, low G, half cyclic, straight away. Don't crank it too hard, but definitely half cyclic will reload that rotor system if you need to reduce the collective to but your first movement should be half cyclic to reload that system. So, okay. yeah, you're right, you know, it's that light feeling like if you go to the top of a roller coaster, or if we get it in the seat here, half cyclic, reload the system, then we're good. What we don't want to do is precipitate and continue a low G condition, because then we're just going to start a roll and then we may get mass bumping, which we don't want. All right, looking pretty good. And when we're doing everything, you'll be a social better pilot if you've got an attitude. Again, it's keeping your eyes outside as much as you possibly can do. Keep looking right. through that compass, find your spot on the horizon. This is a double checking here. This is not primary. You're not an instrument flyer right For sure. now. Primary is out here. The verification is in here. For right? sure. Always think of it like that, right? Mark one eyeball, primary scan, verification. If verification doesn't show what you think out here, then go back to outside and think, oh, okay, what am I looking at here? Why, why is this all wrong? Why is this picture wrong right now? All right, yeah, it looks like that rain's coming back in, so we'll just scoot it back in. Maintaining 700, we're going to pick up the South Redondo arrival just in time to go and get some lunch, right? Because I know you are, you, you're fancying another cheeseburger again. I'm, <laughs> going, I'm hungry just thinking about I know, it. I know, we're going to land at the drive through for real this time. Exactly. I, mean, I know, I know we, did, we, we were threatening to last video, right? But, you know, I think we should actually go and try it. We're, we're just not going to get your fantastic burger garbage. I can't stand that crap. Yeah. Dude, I'm thinking... We've got at least go in and out. Maybe that, well, good, maybe that good bro burger, that's a better one, right? I mean, I'm sorry for the the, the YouTube fans, but uh, I don't know if in and out's the place. Like, uh, there's, there's a couple of good spots in town. Oh, man, you're going to get some hate mail on that one. Yeah, I know, right? I, I know. know. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. Well, that, that, that was a GD bro burger. That's a good one. GD right. bro makes right. a really Let's good burger. Let's turn it into Redondo, man. All right. Before we start going all the way down to Naples and Huntington Beach here. Either way, I'm hungry. Alright, cool. Coming back on Redondo, maintain 700. Good job. Keep us between 80 and 90 knots. And just fly us right over the middle right now, right? We're just doing everything we can for noise abatement. We're trying to be the, the friendly flyers of the sky with a helicopter. We're trying to fly over people's houses. As much as we can, right? There's only so much you can do, but exactly. 700 over the road is exactly what we're looking to do. So just to recap, Aaron, so you know, obviously we zipped out there within the, in between the rain showers today. Uh, we were basically looking at talking to some of the basics of, air, of the flyer. The 44 takes a little bit of getting used to, doesn't it, right? Because it's just yeah. a, it's so much faster and more powerful. You, you tend to be chasing it to start with. So what did you think of it today? Yeah, the 44, I just feel like I'm feathering it so much more, just making really tiny adjustments, like I, I said last time. And... Uh, 
Um, it's cool that the weather uh, the weather was really interesting. Um, just you know, all of a sudden we're clear and blue, and and then all of a sudden it's raining. Yeah, oh, they're they're like, oh, there's a rain cloud there. Let's go the other way, right? Yeah, that's the good yeah. thing about helicopters because we can. We can just yeah. say rain cloud there. No, we're going the opposite direction. But you're right, right? You have to feather the 20, the 44 a lot. You can't be as uh, you know bigger inputs as you would do the 22 because if you do that the 44, the, the, the actual result will be far too much than you anticipated. Oh, right? yeah. So even just acceleration, deceleration, this thing is is a lot, you know, a little bit more tricky sometimes to do that deceleration because it doesn't want to slow down as yeah. well, right? You just like, okay, how much more do I have to push down the power here to slow down? And everything just happens a little bit faster because we are, you know, just so much, you know, so, so much faster in the first place, a bit more power. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, but the same basic supply, right? The same control performance method would apply in the 22 would apply in the 44. Just the 20 inches in a, you know, 22 will give you more like about, you know, 70, 75 knots, whereas it will give you more like 90 knots in a, in a 44. So you For can sure. anticipate 50 to 20 knots faster with that. Again, you'll get, you know, two inches in a 44 will give you a lot more vertical speed than two inches in a 22. Hello again, everybody. If you notice today, the weather wasn't as good as last time, but still an amazing experience regardless. Um, today, we did a little bit of straight and level flying. We did some speeding up and slowing down, maintaining air speeds and altitudes, and making a couple radio calls, um, which actually was uh, probably the hardest part of the whole day. The weather wasn't so bad, it started raining. A lot of people don't think we can fly in the rain. Um, I'm sure if it gets bad enough, we wouldn't. Um, but uh, it wasn't too bad out there. It flew really smooth for the most part. Um, and then it was a little bit different helicopter. It was different than the red one. Um, the gauges were different, uh, which I thought was really cool. And I'm ready to do it again. I'm ready to go again right now, even though it's starting to rain even more. If there's something out there that you want to see that we haven't done yet, and we may potentially do in the future, let us know. Make sure you uh, comment on it. And I um, apologize last time saying click the like button. Make sure you smash the like button. I watched every single video, and every single person, no matter what the video was, apparently you smash the like button. You don't click the like button. Again, I apologize. Please make sure you smash it. Smash that like button and see us again next time where we may do some takeoffs, maybe some pickups, uh, which is sounds like a great time.